It is where you pick money. Oh, Abuja people are enjoying. Oh, they have money. Oh, Nancy, give me some money. It's not like that. <laughs> because even in Abuja, there are a lot of slums in Abuja. Even the so-called highbrow areas, like the Asokoros and the Meitamas, if you just take a look at the back or even close to it, you see a lot of things happening there. Housing, a lot of poor people, and you see inequality staring you in the face. So let's get straight to our discussion. Professor Iberia Omodewe is with me right here. Uh, the publisher of SDG Journal. Yes, isn't it? A SDG Monitor. Uh, this was launched yesterday. Prof, welcome yes. first. Yes, and Prof is from uh, O Analytics. O Analytics, yes. yes. Research o and Analytics Development. Analytics mm -hmm. uh, Research and Development Initiative. Prof, welcome again. Where have you been? It's been a long time. I've not <laughs> as in seen you. Yeah. We have spoken <laughs> yeah, a few on the times. Phone, yes. Yeah, but I've not seen you in a while. What have you been up to? Well, I've been working on the monitor mm. uh, and um, developing it and um, conducting a lot of research uh, to see how our government is uh, implementing the Sustainable Development Goals. And as you know, these goals were established to improve the lot of humanity all over the world, not just Nigeria. Nigeria is part of it, of course, but uh, so many other people are suffering around the world. And so the global community came together to uh, first the MDGs, mm -hmm. now the SDGs, the SDGs yeah. and the 17 goals. And these goals uh, uh, have targets. And uh, the, we, we, what we do is try to see how our own government is doing in implementing, our, in making efforts to meet the goals, uh, each of these goals. And so that's what we've been doing in the background mm -hmm. with, with the support of the Ford Foundation, yeah. which is a, a great resource mm -hmm. for these kinds of uh, 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 projects that help uh, people around the world. Mm. Okay, uh, Prof, let's just get down straight to business. You know, it's um, just like my intro. I tried as much as possible to inform our viewers or perhaps refreshing their minds on the discussion today that income inequality is so... Is so, you know, it stares us there in the face. Poverty, inequality is human face. As we discuss it, it's not just discussing with mouth and your mouth will be yes. like up and down. No, it has impact. A lot of people are suffering from it. But let me ask you this very fundamental question, yeah. which I think I've also asked a few people. Is Nigeria a poor country? Let's start with that. No. Uh, no. Yes. I think we are very, very well blessed with uh, resources. We are put in a very good geographical area of wealth by God, all of us. Um, Nigeria is not a poor country by any measure. What it is, is uh, a rich country of poor people. And, uh, and uh, that uh, irony, that kind of co uh, situation, contradiction, is uh, brought about by ourselves because we have not been able to manage our wealth. Uh, the, the problem of governance, the problem of leadership is one thing that uh, derails every effort uh, to realize our wealth, uh, to, to, to make the wealth spread so that many Nigerians will benefit from the endowments that God has given it. So Nigeria is not a poor country, but it's a rich country of poor people. Yes. How do you really just oppose that? Because just do, do, during my intro also, I did uh, tell our viewers that the world's 26 richest people own as much as the poorest 50% of the world. That's about the 26 richest people in the world own as much as 3.8 billion people yes. uh, of uh, the world. Just tell me perhaps some of the causes of in income inequality and why this statistics is like this. Yeah. That 26 people out of 7 billion people own yeah. as, I'm not, <laughs> it's not that I don't like them. I do like them, <laughs> you know. Or I'm not saying, oh, why are they rich? No, you know. Well, you know, um, capitalism is a system mm. that uh, generates wealth. And uh, in a free competition, some people will definitely get more than others. 
but uh, so so you are right about saying that you, you don't envy, you don't uh, I, criticize I don't them for that. that. Yes, no. uh, there's nothing wrong yeah. with that. And so actually, it's important to make that distinction between poverty and income inequality. Yes. While they're related, they're not exactly the, the same. same. You know, if we are living in a country where the uh, the poverty line is uh, 500 naira, yeah? And uh, so uh, I have 500 naira, and then you have uh, 10,000 naira. The income gap is, is huge, yeah? Uh, but uh, so with that 500 naira, I'm poor. But suppose now our economy is such that uh, if I can be brought up of this, brought out of this covert line, and then I get like um, uh, 1,000 1, naira yeah, or 2,000 naira. Yeah. And you get even um, even increase your own to say twelve thousand. I am not poor. Me representing so many other people, people. and uh, but the income gap still has it's even increased. increased. But it doesn't matter because I'm not poor, because uh, we have reduced poverty. So, po so poverty has a line. We can say that it's a threshold. This one, we, we can tell when somebody is poor if he doesn't meet that threshold. But uh, there's no such threshold on income gap. Mm. There's no threshold on it. So, uh, so there, is, there is a distinction, uh, but there is some closeness between them. So, so when people sometimes are discussing uh, uh, income gaps and poverty line, they seem to juxtapose it. That's the and, same. And, uh, but I think that's wrong. But uh, there's also uh, almost a correlation with it, because perhaps, Prof, uh, I want you to listen to me too, to yes. understand, or perhaps to answer if I am correct. There is a strong correlation between income inequality and poverty because there may also be a certain income that you receive that will cause you to enter the poverty line. Yes. So there is a strong, it's, it's, like, it's like this. And you can also get out of it. Yes, yes. Isn't yes. it? Yes, the correlation okay. is there. They are, yeah. they, are, they are very related. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there, there's some difference, clear difference. And so I don't want people to think that income inequality is the same thing as, as, poverty. as poverty. We do have our own problems of poverty. We have been rated as uh, the home for the extreme, world's poor. Uh, yeah, the world's poor, the most extremely extreme. poor mm. uh, people. So, so yes, we do have that problem. And um, although our, our president recently criticized a lot of these statistics that come from outside the country, and uh, he may have a point, but uh, I think he, he charged uh, the new economic council that your premier problem, I mean the premier assignment, uh, one of the most important thing I'm assigning you to do is to get the right statistics for us. Well, I think that's, uh, that, that concern is legitimate concern. But, but to, to do that, um, you should give that assignment to the right, uh, yes. to the, the right, right agency. Yes. Because I also thought about, are yes. they furnished, can yes. they be equipped with? Exactly. It takes give a lot. Give it to yes. the NBS. NBS to do. And, to, to, and put your money mm -hmm. where your mouth oh, is yes, yes. by giving a lot of money to NBS mm -hmm. so that it can do mm -hmm. the important work. And also, uh, Mr. President should, at the same time, um, do something and put pressure on getting the right count of this country. Because you can't it's get census. any data without correct census. Census, that's yes. head count. Yes. How many Nigerians mm -hmm. are there? Are we? And how are we going to now talk about getting the right data to make decisions when we don't know how many of us are there? Mm. Prof, so what's the problem of Nigeria? Is it a problem of poverty? Or is it a problem of income inequality? Well, I think we have... Um, well, if, this, if the statistics are correct, mm. which um, I have no other thing to believe but on what I see. Um, I think we have both problems. We have a uh, problem of uh, poverty because the statistics is there that 87 million or so Nigerians are living under the poverty it's line. About 93 million or so, or uh, 98. Yeah. Okay, so that's a that's mm. huge number. Mm. So that's a problem. But we also have a huge problem of, of, of inequality, you know? And uh, so the solutions are all related. You know, if we want to solve the problem of poverty, we know what to do. If we, if we also want, you know, the problem with this country is that it doesn't have a policy on inequality. There's none. 
Mm. You may have many policies for quality, what uh, um, for, quality. For, for How about for, the labor laws, all those stuff? It, but just like the minimum wage increase now yes. is also a policy in some sort yeah, yeah. of addressing income inequality. No, that's so what it speak. is doing, but it, yeah. does have no, it has no policy of inequality. Say, say this is what we are going to do to bridge the gap, to between lower the gap between rich and, and poor. It doesn't have that. It does have things that it does that you can say because the two concepts are related. Mm. You can say that these things they are doing can be counted on this side and also on that side. For instance, the, the, the major and I think honest effort that this government is making uh, to ameliorate the suffering of people that living below the poverty lines and or that are generally poor is SIP, right? Social investment The program. social investment mm -hmm. uh, uh, program. program. And, and, and it, 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 at, the, at the onset of this administration, it, it, it stated it as one important thing that it would do. So that is doing, and it came up with a very large sum of money, uh, 500 billion. billion uh, but the problem is, this 500 billion is not being released. I mean, some of it's yeah, released, of course, released, yes. But it's not, but it's not all, the, all the 500 billion has not been released, so you can now blame the program for not doing this or doing that, because they don't have money to do it. So we have a problem of implementation which is the subheading of our journal, because it can't implement with zero funds. It's not enough to have budgetary allocation. We must see how much of that is actually given to do the work. And so that program has a lot of things it's doing to help, uh, to help out the poor. So that's a pro-poor pro -poor policy. Uh, policy. But, but uh, when it comes to... Uh, uh, the issue of, um, of uh, the income gap, which we know, you know, I think there are so many statistics mm. from Oxfam, you yeah, have, you have really. given us some of that, that shows uh, how unjust it is uh, that, uh, that, that our society is, that mm. uh, so many people have so much fund that uh, when you uh, relate it to the poverty, it is really mind boggling. Mm. Um. Talking about inequality, I think President Jimmy Carter, the former president of the United States, did say that inequality is uh, a disease of modern civilization and it's rooted more in injustice. Do, do you really agree with him? Well, I agree with a lot of what Jimmy Carter said. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, because he's a, he's, a, he's a leader with a heart, you know. Uh, but yes, I, 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 it's very nice to have a global leader like that talk about global inequality, you know, because, you know, to be a leader of the United States is something mm. big uh, for the whole world. And uh, for him to do that, that's great. Um, but me, my concern is mostly Nigeria, more than it is... Uh, do you think that what Jimmy Carter said applies to Nigeria? Yes, yes. Okay. I mean, where you have this kind of huge... You know, this inequality means that there is a huge concentration of wealth at the top. top. Uh, and, um, and, and what we have found in our study, that even in good times, even in periods when mm. our economy Economic is in, high. yes, the poor still get poor. Okay, it apart is. from the causes, uh, what are other causes of income inequality? Because I, and you've alluded to it, one of those causes could be low uh, economic growth. If yes, an economy, that's one. Yes, it's not growing that much. Yes. But we've also seen, even in cases of Nigeria, when we were growing 6, 7, 8 percent, we still had a lot of income inequality. Apart from economic growth, are there other causes of income inequality? Yes, yes. You know, well, well, for instance, income inequality, um, the greatest cause of it in this country is political will. There is no political will to tackle it. There's no honesty in tackling it. As I said, there is no policy. The country has no policy on income inequality. So when you discriminate against women, you are promoting income inequality. When you don't put your girls in school, you make them less competitive so that those who go to school will... She, she can't compete. You know, that's what that does, education. And uh, when, when you allow, when you do not make good investments in health, 
people have to be healthy in order to mm. struggle for yeah. when so when you can't make good investments in education good investments in health then you are promoting also in many ways poverty and income inequality course, yeah. but i think the most important thing the government should do is review their tax policy yeah. the tax policy is so regressive at the top level there are billions that are being frittered away in this country by you know when okonji while i was uh, here she said in 2014 that, uh, our, uh, that some, through some concessions and tax uh, uh, rebates, rebates so to the top level uh, companies, uh, big People, businesses, yeah. the country was losing mm -hmm. about seven, close to $780 billion in three years. She, she gave it in a, a talk she gave at the at the National Assembly, in, in a moment she was invited there, I think uh, uh, in 2014. Yes, and she said um, uh, between 2011 and 2013, that's how much we lost. Tax rebates, tax heavens, that this, these people take this money, ship it out of the country. So that is regressive taxation. When you are taxing the rich less, and therefore, there is no income coming to government to invest in education, to invest in infrastructure that will help everybody move up. So, so, and, and so, we need to have more progressive taxation. Yeah, we need to have that. So that more people, uh, so the more you make, the more you, you pay. pay, you know? And we need to start taxing some of these luxuries Put, instead of having this VAT on everything, <coughs> which is regressive to the poor, they should target VAT on luxury goods that these rich people enjoy. A lot of champagnes, the most expensive champagne. I think we are supposed to be one of the World, uh, world's yes. best market for champagne. champagne yeah. Something we don't even make here. So why don't you put huge VAT on it so that they have the money to pay for it, so they pay for it. And you take that VAT money to improve the lots of the poor. All these huge expensive cars that come here, many, many expensive cars, including the ones the government, the people, the government themselves are using. So there's so many luxury cars, so many uh, airplanes by the rich, put VAT on them. You know, don't put VAT on everything for poor people because you are also, also making them pay tax. That's regressive tax to them. It should be progressive tax if you put it on mm -hmm. these uh, luxuries. So mm -hmm. those are the ways I think that um, government can do something mm -hmm. about uh, decent, uh, about, about improving the lot of poor people. You know, uh, of course we have a lot of have-nots. Uh, just like you've also said, the haves are, are getting richer. The have not are even getting poorer. Yeah. You've mentioned invest in education, yes. invest in your girls. Yes, I also invest in health. Yes, invest in health. I also do think perhaps income for women, I women that do the same jobs as men, should also be paid the oh, same yes, yes, as yes. men because that is also an issue. Exactly. A man and a woman will be doing the same job, but a man is paid higher than the woman exactly. doing the same jobs. Exactly. So you I see, think you, you have put your finger. Mm. On, on, on the issue of uh, decent work. work yeah. Decent work calls for equal opportunity. Mm. So a woman should be paid the same thing as a, as a man. I mean, the, uh, everybody should you know, equal, have equal opportunity in practice, not just in talk. The condition of work at workplaces. Mm. Some Nigerians are dying. They're, they're dying from work-related accidents. He, he, he remember the one in Lagos mm. where this hot iron, melted iron in a mm. Chinese uh, company in Lagos poured on this man and he died. So many people died there and nobody says anything about them. No, there are no policies that are effectively implemented in making sure that employers do their own share of creating conditions that are conducive for decent work. So that is government, that is political will. There is no uh, uh, policy that makes sure that they stop people from doing this part-time work. And, and give them, the people can do part-time work for years. And you don't incorporate them and give them full-time positions. That's contract so, jobs. Yeah, so that they will have, they would have benefits. 
you have to give people jobs that carry benefits. So, so th because, you know, they're they are, they are working uh, for the future as well, because they're working to have some things that they use when they become old. So you have to give these kinds of, uh, the government has to be very serious, our Ministry of Labor mm -hmm. has to be very serious about um, uh, creating a conducive condition for the Nigerian worker and get on the cases of employers so that they can do this or else. And if you did that, you, you, are, you are doing pro-decent work. Mm. The, the yeah. SDGs 8, yes, you're it's doing it. You know, still talking about those decent work and all of that, we did, it's so startling that in Nigeria, I think the data says you have two doctors per 10,000 patients, which is also part of the decent work we're talking about. How mm -hmm. do you expect two doctors to attend to 10,000 people? Then we're also talking about the decent environment. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm aware, not I'm told. I'm told and I'm also <laughs> aware yeah. that in fact for some doctors, when they are going to examine patients, even in national hospital, yes, yes, national hospital, they don't even have gloves oh. to put on. Um, I was also told, I think they are expecting the Minister of uh, Health to visit the National Health Hospital. Since they heard it now, they are trying to say, okay, they are patching, oh, bring out all the things. But when the Minister of Health is not coming, the whole place is in disarray. So who do we think we are deceiving? Is it that we don't even know what to do or we know what to do and we refuse to do them? Do you understand what yes, I'm trying to yes. say? So when you see that you have a, like a personality or your boss is coming to visit you, you try as much as possible to put things in order. Yes, National Hospital, I'm calling you out because that's supposed to be like, you know, the epitome of health facility in, yes, the country, in the country, though yes. it was not built to house the number of people. It was supposed to be a child yeah. and mother hospital, so to speak. But that aside, why I brought that in is because of the decent work we're talking about. Two yes. doctors per 10,000 people. Yes, it's not we, decent we, for the doctors. It's, it's not decent for and the doctors uh, or the health profit professionals. The yes, yes, it doesn't profit them. Yes. Now, the, uh, uh, Prof, where, uh, where should we bring in the area of like FDIs, foreign direct investment, the area of official development assistance that we're seeing from other developing countries, and also the issue of aid, yeah. uh, especially aid in Africa. Uh, I think we still also get some kind of aid in Nigeria, uh, but it may not be up to other African countries. Where do you put all of those in fighting in economic, income equality? Can it? Yes, well, I, I think actually one of the recommendations that... Uh, some institutions that monitor these issues, say, of Nigeria, is that uh, you should just uh, seek f foreign help in, um, in bringing aids for the benefit of the poor. Mm -hmm. You know, because, because we have a large proportion of poor people. But I think um, Nigeria is also able to do a lot by itself, so. if it has the political will to do it. We have the resources to do it. If we, if we have to do something about, um, look at all the money that's being frittered away through, uh, um, uh, through fuel subsidy. And so the government does what does it take to, to do it. that? What it takes is political will to go there and say, well, a lot of this thing is too much now. Because these are the people, the people stealing all those monies through that uh, existence of that policy are the ones that are increasing the income gap from fairly, you know, and a whole lot of poor people, uh, uh, and, and, you know, and then the fight against corruption is also a fight against these kinds of things, you know, mm -hmm. because if you, if you clamp down on the people who are frittering away our money, people who are stealing our money, stealing us blind, you use that resource that you have recovered to help the lot of poor people, you know, and I think, I think um, with respect to this administration, we, uh, we believe that you know, they have the mind to do this. That is, that is a certain progressive flavor uh, around Buhari himself, in, in, at least in the things that he expresses. But um, he should uh, muster the will to actually face these people who are, uh, are doing our people harm by taking away the resources that they need. Because as you started this program with, your first question was quite apropos. It says, do you think we are a poor or a rich country? Yeah. Because, because when you see all the problems there, you wonder, why do they call us the largest economy in this 
um, on a, 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 African, on an African continent. continent. Yeah. And why the world, everybody's coming here for opportunities to, 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 to see, it. And, and when they come, they say, look, this country has great potential. Are we going to live and die on potential? Potentials. In fact, you know, that so is one word do I, I don't like it. anymore, especially using, used in the Nigerian context. <laughs> Nigeria is a country of potentials. I don't like that word anymore <laughs> because of the, oh, it's, it's great. It's potentially <laughs> great, you know. Um, Prof, yeah. the, uh, I know you've answered the questions, uh, this question somehow, somehow, but there are, are there other things that you think that we can use to lift the billion, the bottom bil billion. Oh, that's Professor Collier. <laughs> Professor Collier's yes, book, The Bottom yes. Billion. And yes. I interviewed him years ago, I think. Oh, really? 2010. Yes. Yes, it was in Nigeria. And I, guy, yes, yeah. and he's, I interviewed he's at him. Oxford. Yes, Oxford. Yeah. Uh, the bottom billion. So now it's not up to billion. What I wanted to say is how do you think we can lift the bottom millions with. Uh, living I with income inequality out. Yeah, yes, I think that what we can do, as you said, is some of the things that yes, I have said. Yes, We have to expand the economy. Okay. You know, because if you don't expand the economy, the people won't have opportunities to have a job that will lift them up. But another thing is these other investments I said you should do. Mm -hmm. You know, when you invest in education, you create jobs in that sector. When you invest in health, you create jobs in the medical sector. So these things have multiplier effect and so uh, government must that the most primary thing is is to come out and say and the Buhari, Buhari himself has the image that fits this to come out and say look this nonsense must stop but even if he comes out and say this nonsense must stop does he have the money to say this nonsense must stop that's what i'm saying then he, he when you say this nonsense must, must stop, stop not just must uh, not. rhetorically is there money to support that Yes, yes, you, you can, you can, uh, you can uh, bring all these funds out now uh, by being very strong on, on this anti-corruption mm. issue, by, by, by going to places like this, uh, this place we know there's a lot of wastage is going in through, that's uh, the fuel subsidy, mm. by doing, uh, by making sure that, uh, that um, uh, the, the rich pays more. You know, there's a lot of money. I just gave you that figure, so close to 780 billion in three years. How much is our budget? How much is our budget? You know, so that's it's, uh, our budget uh, is pretty close below, uh, much, much more below that. If you divide that amount by three years, it's, it's more than we, we, we do mm -hmm. for budgeting. Several, several years added together. Mm -hmm. So really, there's money. We have to find a creative way to get this, to to to, to uh, get the backbone, to face the uh, the 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 big companies that are that's taking our collective uh, patrimony and uh, depositing the, depositing them in um, foreign banks, yeah. uh, uh, and um, and so yes, the fight, uh, the fight for which the president campaigned, uh, in theory, was very very good. But doing something about it is what to do. Okay. Yes. All right, Prof. Thank you very much for coming today. That's the much we can take. Yes. We'll continue to look at this and continue to have the conversation. And perhaps also, should I say moral suasion 